we're brewing the highest ABV beer allowable by law. What ABV is that? To get started, we're gonna fill our kettle with 10 gallons of water. We're doing a five gallon beer, 10, 10, gallons, 10 of water, gallons of water, close to 20 pounds of grain, like three pounds of sugar. Wow, it's gonna be large. It's gonna be huge. It's gonna be massive. The only thing I'm worried about is steel fermentation. Is our yeast gonna get stressed out is the problem, man. Right. Do you remember brewing I don't this even, beer? I don't. We man, brewed this it's eight, been, nine months ago. I just blacked back in right now. I'm Emmett. And I'm Ross. And this is Claw Hammer Supply. The largest homebrew channel on the internet. If you don't count the other channels. I don't count the other channels. After filling our kettle with water, we milled our grains. This beer had a massive grain bill, 26 pounds, if I recall. 26 pounds? 26 pounds. It's a lot of malt. This is one of those grain bills you wish you had a bigger mill. The more grain that we have, the, the more potential sugar we have from the grain. And that potential sugar gives us the potential for more alcohol. And more alcohol is more fun. Are we gonna get hammered, is the question. <laughs> Will it be up? I think if I drink this whole thing, yeah. I'd probably wake up on a porch without my pants on. Well, that sounds interestingly specific. Is there a story there? I think I was like 25. I just woke up on a, on a front porch with, the, with, with no day, pants with no on. Pants on. You a nice, real fine crush on there, Ross. Did, look at that. And uh, what does a fine crush give you? Oh, you get better efficiency. Oh, yeah. What does that mean? Higher potential for more booze with less grain. Due to the fact that we have such a large grain bill, our efficiency is kind of fucked. We're mashing in. Heck yeah. There's so much grain in this beer that we ran out of space in our bucket. So we milled, we mashed, we're milling, we're mashing. It's a whole process when the beer is this big. Second grain edition, here we go. The mash was extremely thick. I mean, it was so much grain. It was so much grain. And luckily, enzymes broke it down and started to do their magic and thinned it out for me. Okay, I love enzymes. But you know, I was worried for a good 15, 20 minutes there. Oh my. But how many ABVs are we there yet? Oh, I'd say we're about, we're about three ABVs in. Yeah. All right, let's check this pH. We're gonna check our pH. We're shooting for 5.2, 5.3, 5.4. If we're in the ballpark, we have the potential, the potential, mind you, for a higher alcohol by volume beer. We're adding a little lactic acid. Oh, lactic acid. It's gonna drop our pH, because it's an acid. Mm -hmm. Acids drop. 5.4, okay, all right. Are you Ross, you see it's still quite thick. It's pretty thick. It's gonna, she'll loosen up. Oh yeah. This is gonna be expensive brew day. If you just go to your homebrew shop, buy everything, you're probably looking at $100. You could easily save a few bucks by buying one yeast packet and making a yeast starter. But yeah, not a cheap brew day, but uh, it's gonna be boozy. Remember at the beginning of the mash, we were very thick. You can see it's loosened up considerably. It has. And we're ready to pull the grain basket out. I'm pressing the grain so we can get more booze. Is it sticky? Oh yeah. That's sugary. sugary. Sticky with sugar. Speaking of squeezing, we also squeezed the grains at the end of the mash. Oh, we did do it. Don't tell anybody. Don't, don't tell anybody. Don't tell the internet. No, because people will lose their minds with all their conspiracy theories about astringencies and uh, disease. Hearsay, and, uh, rumors. I have no it. time for that. I'd say squeeze it, baby. Believe it, squeeze it. Squeeze it hard. I mean, you tell me, man. I'm feeling good. When confident. we're good, yeah, I think if we're, we're good, we're good. We're good. Should I run it out there? Yeah. Go on, Green. You're free. Time for our 90 minute boil. Yeah, we just finished our mash. 
We're gonna ramp our temp up, boil for 90 minutes. The typical boil, 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. We bumped it up to 90. The longer you boil, the higher the booze. It's a well-known fact. So we're gonna do two ounces of powder towel and two ounces of U.S. Goldings. Let's just go ahead and add our candy sugar. You wanna add them with an hour left? Yeah. D180. <laughs> candy, K-A-N-D-I syrup, S-I-R-O-O-P. That's how you know it's good. Candy syrup, yeah? I mean, why use candy syrup over like a beet sugar or just a straight granulated sugar? It is a color thing, it is a flavor thing. Some of that sweetness will remain unfermented and then some of the color on that is gonna contribute to the final color of the beer. Any liquid sugar you're gonna add to a electric brewing kettle. Uh-huh. Always. Turn off the heat. The thing about all that sugar though, it's gonna ferment out. This final beer, it'll have some residual sweetness, probably from that candy sugar we added. Some of that's gonna be unfermentable sugars, oh, yeah. but most of that is gonna convert right into alcohol and give us that barely legal final ABV we're looking for. We got the sugar added. We're gonna go ahead, turn the heating element back on. So my main concern was the four pounds of sugar. Is the yeast gonna be able to handle that and ferment it down to where we need it to go to get us to the place we wanna be? Valid concern. That's a lot of sweetness in a wart. My main concern is what the yeast is gonna do with that sugar. I think it's gonna be stoked on the sweetness. I think it's gonna be not stoked on all the alcohol it makes. I hope that it gets to that 15% we're looking for. Right, because it could stall out way early. It could just early. like murk itself before kill, we get kill there. Kill itself, right? Yeah. We got an hour boil from here on out. So we still need to boil off like a gallon and a half too. I'm a little worried, Ross, not gonna lie. Not for the cameras. Not for the people at home. I don't know if we're gonna hit it. Penta beer. What the hell did we just brew, man? What is this? Ross, we brewed this so long ago. I know. It looks like it looks like a Belgian quad. I think that's what we were trying to do. We were brewing a Belgian quad goosed up a little bit to make it a Belgian five. Yeah, a penta beer, if you will. Yeah. So to give our yeast the best chance to actually help us make this 15% beer happen, yeah. we're gonna add two teaspoons of yeast nutrient with 10 minutes left in the boil. Two of these boys. Here we go, here we go, here we go. One, two, one to grow on. Yeah. There you go. The homies. I designed this to hopefully be a 15% beer. And 15% 15 is the maximum ABV in the state of North Carolina, determined by the ABC. Does the 15% rule apply to home brewers or just commercial brewers? I don't know, but I didn't want Johnny Law showing up at my doorstep when I'm posting this on the internet. Yeah, So compliance is compulsory. So I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes. While we're waiting for 10 minutes, we're gonna hook up our hoses and our pump and our plate chiller, and we're gonna run some of this boiling hot wort through that entire system. Calling it a hot wart sani. We're gonna sterilize our equipment with our yeast food. And the beer. Nobody knows this, man. There's these monks, they actually brew beer. Don't tell anybody, okay? okay? No one knows. They're, they're sequestered in Belgium, oh. a place no one's ever been. Or heard of. Or heard of. In monasteries, they never see the outside world. They just devote their entire lives to uh, brewing and drinking beer. Which is why they're brewing quads. Huh? I guess, man. Hey Ross. Hey Emmett. We've done everything we can. Now it's time to chill it. You ever seen a neti pot? We could go. Yeah. The moment of truth is almost upon us. Oh. Shh. Wolverine yeast claws. WLP 500, monastic ale yeast. We pitched three packs of monastery ale yeast. The yeast, are the yeast are monks. Oh yeah. Is this the moment of truth? Moment of truth, Emmett, here it is. This one's for all the marbles. Nice. 
We've got our yeast in the fermenter. It needs a little oxygen bump before it starts fermentation. So we're gonna aerate our yeast quickly, dissolve some oxygen in with the pitch, and then we'll sock it away in the cellar for fermentation. Man, we had 11.38 with our starting gravity. That Every was our yeah, man. original gravity? Everything was looking great. We checked the gravity four months, five months after we brewed it. What did we hit when you checked it? It was 10.37. How low did we need to go? We'd have to go Super a little bit lower. We still had a chance though, Ross. What'd we do, Emmett? Well, we made a yeast starter. <laughs> Smart, we should've done that the first time. We should've. Uh-huh. Then what we do with the yeast starter? We added it to the beer. Oh, that's what you do with that. Yeah. Okay. It, and it uh, didn't work. So after that failed, we added some champagne yeast. Champagne. Hoping, hoping that champagne yeast would have the tolerance to get in there and give it 110%. Mm-hmm. It also failed. And then after he said it didn't didn't change after the second attempt, uh -huh. I was like, you know what? I should look at the recipe. Go on. And I looked at my recipe I designed. Yeah, what did it say? Uh, I designed a 13% beer. So basically, we decided to do a brew day brewing the highest ABV beer. Go on. I then created a recipe and did not design the recipe to actually be able to brew that particular beer. Well, I'll drink to that. Yep. Hell yeah. So another perfect brew day. Perfect brew day. By Clawhammer Supply. Nailed it. Cheers, man. Cheers, man. Whew. I mean, it tastes like it's 15%. Yeah, dude, it's boozy. Definitely boozy. But I feel like the sweetness kind of balances that out. Yeah. But it's definitely boozy. 